Hello everybody, welcome back to Spirituality with Gabriella. Today I just wanted to come on and say hi, tell you a little bit about where I have been personally, and share a little bit about my journey on this spiritual path, because as we know, this path continues to progress and develop, and it continues to bring us new challenges. And I really care about being real and vulnerable with my audience and with my clients. And so it's just really important to me that I share that when you pursue this spiritual path, you are going on a soul searching mission. And by virtue of doing that, your entire life is going to get uprooted in some shape or form. It is not necessarily a path that we pursue simply to feel good or simply to be enlightened. It's a path that truly tests every single part of who we are. And within these tests, what's really happening is that God or spirit is asking you, are you willing to let go of all of your attachments? And can you prove that you can let go of them and just continue to love God? or spirit, or source, whatever terminology you choose. So for me, just to give a little bit of context, you know, I went through a really difficult um, journey with my twin flame, who is my current partner. We are now in a beautiful relationship, but that was kind of the beginning of what I would call the true dark night of the soul, is what many, many term it. And that was a process that took me a lot of self-love, a lot of deep reflection, looking within, and really having to grow into being a sovereign person just within myself and really being able to hold myself. And it's funny because, of course, how spirit works is it doesn't stop there. It continues going, right? So we see the same with our careers, with our families, with our friends, with everything that is old. The question is, what are you willing to let go of and how can you continue to become who you're meant to be? And so for me personally, what that's been looking like is in December, I went to Bermuda and I was there with my family and I was channeling the whole time. I was super activated. I was releasing a lot. I got really physically sick when I was there. So I had a terrible cold. Um, there was just so much that was coming out physically from me. And it was because I wasn't doing all of my readings and client work, and I was really consciously trying to let go of other people's energy that had gotten stored in my system. And when you do energy work, naturally, you are taking a part of your consciousness and you're channeling light from above, and you are touching a lot of different people's energies and consciousnesses. So it's similar to think of if you're working in a kitchen, for example, let's say that you work with like hundreds of different ingredients, naturally, your hands are going to get dirty <laughs> over time. And that's basically what was happening to me. So I spent all of December and January really pulling back my energy from old relationships, karmic relationships, from anything that didn't feel imbalanced or aligned. I raised my prices. I intentionally did less. And it was all because I was attempting to cleanse, 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 and cleanse more. And what happened is that the circle of people that I had been spending time with, which was a huge circle of people, I was extremely social last year, it felt like it was like 50 people, it started to become 10. And then from 10, it started to become five. And really now, you know, I'm really just spending time with the people that feel like my true soul family, or my lifelong friends that I've had for a really long time from childhood. But a lot of the other connections, um, whether they be clients or friendships, just kind of gradually started to exit my energy field. And it was very interesting because even with clients that I've had for quite a while too, our energies were no longer in balance and no longer aligned. And that doesn't mean anything good or bad about either one of us. But as I was cleansing, I noticed clients like kind of leaving my energy field as well. And so what has resulted is that the people that I'm working with now, it is a small, sacred, intimate relationship where we are like soul family. Like we so deeply cherish each other and care about each other. And there's so much unconditional love there. And because of that unconditional love, I am able to be such a pure channel, really connect to their guides and really tell them the truth, whether they like to hear it or not. And it's funny because 
as I've been through my own personal journey, I actually have a guru in this lifetime. And I know he's my guru because he's much older than me. He came into my life really completely randomly, but at a time when I was dealing with a lot of heartbreak and depression. And he has helped me understand that, you know, in this spiritual path, we're not here to be a martyr. We're not here to try and help everyone and everything. We are here to spread love and light, but there is a big distinction between the two. And for so much of my life, I was getting them so confused. You know, I just thought that if I just help every single person under the sun, that one day, you know, everything would come back to me and I would be so happy and it would all be great. But actually, what I realized over time is that of course, you hold the intention to help people from the purity of your heart, of course, but you do not do it at the expense of your own alignment, and you also do not do it um, waiting for this end goal to randomly come, because it doesn't, because the truth is that you're always going to meet people that are at vibrationally different levels, and you can't constantly be helping everyone, unless, you know, you decide to be Mother Teresa or Gandhi or something like that, <laughs> I've surrendered myself in this lifetime. I don't think I can do that. What I can do though is for those who are willing, ready, and able to do the work, and the work is very hard on the spiritual path, with those people, that is where I can help to uplift, support, nurture, and be a pure channel. And when I say pure channel, it's like all of their guides are coming in, all of my guides are coming in, and together we are helping them truly up-level their energy field and really transcend human consciousness so that we reach this more spiritual consciousness. And this is a very difficult thing to do because spirit will test you. Spirit has done this with me in my own life. Every single part of my life, I have been tested. I have been asked, how committed am I to the spiritual path? And, you know, the funny thing is that it's so incredibly hard. It really is. If you keep going with this, it's the hardest thing that you'll ever do. However, the magic and the abilities and the real life possibilities that come are just so incredible that you cannot deny that there's something really special happening. And... One day I'll get on here and I'll share some of the just amazing stories where A, I'm convinced that we live in a matrix, like we do create our reality to some extent, and B, I am also convinced that spirit is so deeply nourishing us and supporting us that really all of our fears, they cease to be fears when you truly commit to this path. And truly committing to this path means going deep into your wounding, looking at yourself way more deeply than most people ever look at themselves. It's like you stare in the mirror and you keep looking and you keep looking and you keep looking. And also um, getting to a point where the things that used to trigger you, they no longer trigger you because you come from this great acceptance that that person is just where they are. You are where you are. You are an older, wiser soul. And therefore the triggers cease to be triggers and you are more in this space of neutrality. And, you know, reaching this space has felt really good for me, but it has been a continual exercise in being challenged. So many different relationships, so many different things that have come in and have kind of like stress tested me. And the more that I commit to spirit and God, the more I know that it's all just a test. It's so funny. It's all a test, every single thing. And it's true when they say that everyone in your life is a mirror, that's true as well. So, you know, my invitation is whenever someone comes to you and you are getting triggered by them, ask yourself, well, why is this triggering me? What is going on here? Because this person is just a mirror. And, you know, it's hard to see the world in that way. I'll be practical and say that it's pretty hard. <laughs> but if you can do that, if you can keep going deeper into the work, you will also understand that your life will start to morph into this really beautiful reality. Because naturally you prove that, you don't get so triggered or you don't get so upset. You don't get so emotional. And therefore, all that's left is peace and love. And in order to get to that peace and love, you do have to cleanse all energy vampires. You do have to really understand that self-worth is equivalent to understanding that you are God and God is you. And so things such as money wounds where people struggle to ask 
um, for, you know, a high price or charge what they're worth, you know, that's all a very difficult journey, something that I struggled with for a really long time as well. And I'm sure that there's still work for me to do. But what we are coming to understand is that we are a part of God. God is a part of us. We are one and the same. And so because of that, there's nothing inherently good or bad about money. It is just more about your sacred service and who you are as a person and the energy that you are sharing than anything else. And those who understand the beauty of this work, they'll come always. They'll always come. And so I realized, you know, as I'm speaking to this audience, there's a lot of people that don't work for themselves yet, or maybe you want to be an entrepreneur, or maybe you don't desire that whatsoever. Whatever you desire in life, any dreams, any manifestations or goals you have, I want you to know like they are all possible. I have proven this with my own life. And the power of belief and aligning your energy accordingly is so real. I now have my own formula for manifesting. It's something I teach in my group program and I've never seen it not work. And the only time that manifestation doesn't work is like when people really struggle to believe that they deserve it. That's it. So I hope that, you know, by hearing a little bit of my experience, you understand um, just how difficult this path is if you really commit to it and what is really being asked of you, which is transcending that human base level, the root chakra level to really grow into the highest soul that you can be. And once you let go of all of those attachments and the neediness and being triggered and things like that, you're growing into a really powerful, high vibrational soul and you do get the abilities that equate with that. And so the last thing I'll say here is a lot of people ask me, well, how do I be psychic? How do I be intuitive? You know, it's, a, it's an equation. The more time you spend with source, with God, with yourself, with really trying to fine tune those abilities from a place of pure love, the more abilities you will get. It's not like a switch that comes on and off. And I want you to know that um, it's important to know just what you're asking for, because if you ask for high intuition, you are also asking for high sensitivity. And what that means is you do walk into a room and you feel energy, or you do see a bar and you think to yourself, ooh, I don't know if I can even go there because I don't know if my energy field can hold that. And so it's very important that you know what you are asking for, you trade one thing for the other. You trade a normal human life for a sensitive life, but a gifted life. And for me, you know, my gifts and being able to talk to spirit so purely and clearly has transformed my life. It makes me see every single thing differently to, to the point where sometimes I feel that I can rise above human consciousness and I feel that I can be... Um, more detached in a beautiful way, in a way where I see how intricately my soul has woven this path so that I learn the lesson so that I can be enlightened and even serve to help other souls who are committed to doing the same. And for me, that is an immense gift. It's something I would never, ever, ever um, take for granted. And that is why I'm able to bring that continued passion and life to my work because I'm so committed to that journey that, you know, despite the fact that it's really hard and it causes a lot of sensitivity issues and even energy drain at times, I'm still committed. I'm still doing it. You know, I came here to do this work and I know it. And so, you know, the invitation as you listen to this is if that speaks to you, I want you to know exactly what you're signing up for, which is a very difficult mission, incredibly difficult but it is equally as beneficial and gratifying because you receive so much in return. So thank you for listening to my little life update and also just my reflections on this path. I hope that it helps you in some way. Let me know your thoughts down below. I would really love to get on here and just do more of these videos where I'm kind of talking about these different spiritual concepts and different life things, you know? Um, and I really am at that point in my life where I'm like, those who care will watch and those where it's too much or it's too long or it's too confusing or it's too overwhelming will not and that's fine, you know? It's, it's all about alignment. And I trust that the souls that are meant to receive it and gain something beneficial from it will. 
So thank you. I love you deeply. I really cherish you for being here as part of my journey and on this channel. If you like this video, please give me a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Share it if you feel so inclined. And I will see you all very soon. Bye.